بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين Indeed, all oh, praises you to Allah and my peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Straight away, we go ahead with the second part of our class which is the etiquettes of supplication and we have alhamdulillah and the etiquettes of supplication we covered the importance of the dua and what is the dua is divided to we talked about also the some of those things that would make the dua to be answered and fulfilled and some of those things that will make the dua not to be fulfilled and inshallah we're going to continue with the second part and it could be maybe as the third part as well that is to talk about the times where the dua is to be fulfilled and also to talk about the situation and the status where the dua will be fulfilled and also we talk about the places where the dua is to be fulfilled and who are these people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would normally fulfill the supplication so a dua basically it could be fulfilled because of a certain time or because of certain circumstances or because you are in a place uh, where the dua is most likely to be fulfilled or it could be the person himself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives him and he answers his supplication and those people are going to talk about them inshallah so let's just go inshallah to the to the times where the dua can be fulfilled the dua is to be fulfilled number one when the battle takes place and the prophet وسلم, he said two uh, situations where the dua will not will be not be uh, uh, not answered they will be answered and very rare it is maybe very rare and this is maybe from the not from the prophet وسلم, it's from actually the narrator himself he said they will be fulfilled or sometimes he says it maybe very rarely will not be fulfilled and that that is the quotation our sheikh abdul muslim abad he says is from the narrator himself so they will be fulfilled and that is to call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the nida here it means uh, the nida is the call for the prayer in the it means after the call of the prayer after the adhan it is not while the adhan is going on and the second one and that is when the time it is for war so we call uh, upon allah Azza wa Jal when we are meeting with the enemy engaged with them so that is the enemies we are fighting them in order to make the allah's word to be the uppermost um, in that uh, as well in that hadith we say that the second time is that between the adhan and the iqama which is after the adhan and the prophet وسلم, he said a dua supplication is not to be uh, not fulfilled it will be fulfilled it will not be rejected uh, it will not be rejected that means it will be responded to between adhan and iqama now let me explain a bit more before we go further in general regarding the dua that is when we say the dua for example after the adhan when the adhan is called okay we repeat with the adhan it's better than reciting quran better than making dua so al imadin says Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, we say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Hayya ala salah, la hawla wa la quwwata lak. Hayya ala falah, la hawla la quwwata lak. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Then we pass salutation upon the Prophet, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, or you could say the full dua, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, wa ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun, the full salah Ibrahimiyah. Then, اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة التامة والصلاة القائمة آتي محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة وبعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته. This is the dua that is we talked about that is which is dhikr with the adhan. After the adhan, after you made this dhikr, you may raise up your hands. So here, some of people ask, when do we raise our hands? The supplications either general or they specific. If they are general, so I want to call upon Allah Azza wa Jalla now. I raise up my hands. But if it's specific, I will not raise up my hands unless there is in that hadith that the Prophet raised up his hands. So, for example, 
you go into the toilet. What do you say? Bismillah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabath. Here it's a specific link to the toilet. I don't enter the toilet by saying, Bismillah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabath. The same thing when we, for example, approaching the wife, when we leave the house. For example, journey, the traveling. When we go, there's dua which is for the journey and the dua while you are in the journey. As we're going to see, inshallah, the situations when we make the dua and it's most fulfilled as well. So, for example, in the journey, when we start the journey, you start with Subhanallah, Sakhalana Hada, Wamakuna Lahum Qinin, first of all, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, three times, Subhanallah, Sakhalana Hada, Wamakuna Lahum Qinin, Waina Ida Rabina Lamukalibum, Allahumma in the Allahumma in the Nasaru Kafi Safarina Hada, Birra, what Taqwa, Wamina Lamari Matarda, Allahumma Hawin Alina Safarana Hada, to the end. This is dua to start this, I don't raise up my hand. But while I'm in a journey, I could, and when I'm calling Allah, I raise up my hands. I hopefully that I made it uh, understood for you. Now, take me a question and answer time, please remind me. For example, some of the Adriya, like for example, Dua al istikhara. What do we do? So let's just, first of all, list those okay, times where the Dua is most likely to be fulfilled. Between the Adhan and the Iqamah, so after you finish the Dhikr of the Adhan, you finish the Dhikr after the Adhan, you may you raise up your hands after that to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third time is the last hour of the day of the Jumu'ah. Now, that is why, because today is the Jumu'ah, okay, and it's the last hour, we are in the last hour, okay? So uh, it is the time allocated for the Dua. So we're gonna leave, inshallah, maybe 20 minutes this time for you to make the Dua. This is the time where it is most likely to be fulfilled. That is the time after uh, Asr, in the last hour before the Maghrib. Akhiru sa'a. Prophet Sallam, he said, Fihi sa'a, the day of Jumu'ah, he's got an hour. La yuwafiquha abdul muslim. Uh, any person who happens to be a Muslim, yusalli, calling upon Allah, yas'al Allah shay'a, asking Allah something, except Allah will give it to him. Now you might ask the following question. So how can it be, the Prophet Sallam, he says, he prays, and we know that there is no prayer before Maghrib. Here, we say that first of all, here praying also means making dua. And also, if you have prayed your asr and you are on wudu and waiting for your maghrib, you are in a prayer even though you're not praying. Who said that? Abdullah ibn Salam, radiallahu anhu arba, the Jewish rabbi who embraced Islam. So he said that to Abu Hurairah when he explained to him, because I, he said, I know which hour that the Prophet of Allah talked about. Prophet Allah said, the, the, the day of Jumu'ah is 12 hours. In it, there's an hour. Any Muslim happens to be asking Allah anything, except that Allah will give it to him. So seek it in the last hour after Asr, which is the last hour before Maghrib. So he said to him, Abu Hurairah, to, the, to uh, Abdullah ibn Salam, he said, well, the, the, this, uh, this, this is not an hour for praying. This is an hour, you know, usually it's not, we don't pray. He said, if, well, if you prayed and you're waiting for the prayer, you are in a prayer. Also from the times which is fulfilled is Laylatul Qadr, which we are seeking the whole of this Ramadan for fasting it for that night. So we fast in Ramadan for the sake of that night. Remember that, Ya Ikhwani. We are preparing ourselves. Now we are in the, we just now passed the midday of Ramadan. SubhanAllah. Half of Ramadan is gone. I hardly started my classes in Ramadan. I'm almost finished. Allahi, it's like a blink of an eye. Subhanallah. So these days which is past now 15 days to prepare us for the last 10 nights, don't lose the 10 nights. Because Allah Azza wa said, Laylatul Qadri khayru min alfi shahr. It is better than 1,000 months. Ya salam. Now by this night, we could really not just catch up with those who were before us, we used to live a thousand years plus, we could even overtake them. We could overtake them. Because if we had, huh? 10 nights of Qadr. Each night is almost 84 years. That's 840 years of Ibadah. Just 10 nights of Al Qadr. And you will get more than that because you live roughly between 60 and 70. That is the age of the Ummah Muhammad. Okay? Some of them will go beyond that. So at least you're going to have more than that. If you had 20, that's more than 1,500. And that's only for the night of Al Qadr. There's other as well occasions we have Ibadah as well. This is what the Prophet ﷺ, he said to Aisha when she asked the Messenger of Allah, if I knew which night is the night of Al-Qadr, what do I say? He said to her, say, Allahumma inna ka'afuwam tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Lord, 
You are the one who loves to pardon, so pardon. You are the one who pardons, and you love to pardon, so pardon me. Also from those times that we are as well encouraged to make dua in is the last third of the night. And that is the last third before Fajr. And this is after the Faridah. So when you finish the Isha, the last third of the night, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked, which is the most fulfilled dua? He said, layl al -akhir, the last third of the night, المكتوبات, and also after the prayers which are obligatory. Now, after the prayer of the obligatory, I have to explain to you as well, there is the dhikr. So when you finish, you make the adhkar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Mantasa. After you finish that, okay, after you finish that, and after you finish the adhkar, then if you have a dua to do, yes, but it's not linked directly to the prayer. But here, after Salat al-Faridah, which is the last third of the night, you make your dua. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Aqrabu ma yakun, the most closest person, to his Lord is the last of the night. So if you are to be a person who could mention, remember Allah Azza wa in that time, then be so. Prophet Sallallahu he said, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in every night descends to the nearest heaven when it is the last third of the night. And he would say, he calls upon me and I will fulfill him. He will ask me and I will grant him. He will seek forgiveness for me and I will forgive him. Prophet Sallallahu he said, the Heaven's gates, okay, will open, which is in the last third of the night. And there will be a call according. Is there anybody huh, calling? And it will be responded to. Anybody's asking? And it will be given. And anybody who is having calamity, something which is hardship on him, it will be open for him. So not a single Muslim would call upon a supplication, except that Allah will fulfill it, except for zaniyah, and that is a woman who is fornication, fornicating, and that is a woman, she's looking for a a'udhu billah uh, with her private part to make the haram. And the other one, ashar. Ashar means the, the one who takes the vawa, the wealth of the people in a no due right. Or the one who takes the, um, the tax, the tax collector. So this person also he is as bad as the one who is a woman fornicating. Billah. Those two they will not be fulfilled. Also, we know from the other hadith that the Prophet Sallam, he said that Allah would leave the ones who got dispute from the brothers, from the Muslims. Allah would say to his angels, leave them until they reconcile. So when they reconcile, we will respond to their dua. So this is a dua as well. So it's a dua, which is we say, it is a dua that is being missed by so many people. So you are a person who is in difficulty whether it's poverty, you are in a person who is illness and disease, and you are in, in desperation, okay? This is now the time for you, the last of the night. Raise up your hands. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is calling. He, 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 who is there calling upon me? And I will respond. Who is, it, who is there to, to ask me? And I will grant. Who is there that was in difficulty? And I will ease his difficulty. Subhanallah. So not a single person except that his dua will be, not a single person will be left from the Muslim except that his dua will be fulfilled. But you need to come, you know, to wake up during, the, during that part, which is a really hard, hard part. This is before the Fajr. Also, when you wake up from the night, let's say that some of the people, they call it insomnia. That means he can't, insomnia, that means he can't uh, sleep properly. Ya akhi, subhanallah. Well, invest in the dua, subhanallah. So every time you wake up and you can't sleep, Remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Prophet Sallallahu he said, there is in the night a, a time when a Muslim asks Allah any good from the dunya and the akhir, whether it's from the, this dunya or the akhir, except that Allah will grant him. And this is in every night. Prophet Sallallahu said, man ta'arra min al -layl. Person woke up. You know, sometimes you wake up because there's something, you know, man ta'arra min al -layl. Faqala la ilaha illa Allah. He said, la ilaha illa Allah. Wahdahu. La sharika la. Lahu al wa lahu al -hamd. Huh? I'm going to repeat this dua. So if any person woke up from the sleep for any reason, and he said, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير الحمد لله وسبحان الله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله then he says اللهم اغفر لي 
or he supplicated, his supplication will be fulfilled. If he's to make wudu and prayed, then his prayer will be accepted. Guaranteed. I didn't say this. This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Subhanallah. So this is a supplication in that time which will be fulfilled. So remember that whenever you wake up from the sleep. Also when the person dies. So if the person, he died, the people who are around, they should be making supplication. And that supplication will be fulfilled. And be aware to make supplication against you or against your family with something which is evil. And maybe Allah will fulfill it for you. But call for the deceased and call for yourself and your family and call for the general believers. Umm Salama radiallahu anha, she said, when her husband Abu Salama died. And what happened is that uh, basically that uh, the, the, his, his eyes was overturned. So the Prophet Salam, he closed his eyes. And then he said, when the ruh goes, then the, um, the soul will follow. So when the, sorry, when the soul goes, the eyes will follow. So some of the people, as soon as they saw the eye turned out, they just made a clamor, make a, like a, something which is not really happy with. Uh, so the Prophet said, don't call upon yourself except with good for Verily, the angels are present and they make an ameen or like granted to whatever you say. If you said something bad, they will say ameen to it as well. Then he said, Allahumma ghfir li Abi Salama. O oh Lord, forgive to Abu Salama. Allahumma ghfir li Abi Salama. Warfa darajatahu fil mahdiyin. And raise up his rank in, in, the, in the ones who are guided. Wakhluffu fi aqibihi fil ghabirin. And also make him to be uh, followed by somebody who is good. Waghfir lana wa lahu ya rabbal alameen. And also forgive for him and us. Uh, and us and him, O oh Lord of the alameen. Wafsah lahu fi qabrih. And widen in his grave and put light in his grave all of that from the dua of the prophet uh, in the time when the soul of abu salam had departed from the times as well when the rain comes down so when the rain comes down there's a dua Allahumma ja'alhu nafia. we don't raise up our hands with it but when the rain is after we said this Allahumma, you could make dua as well to allah Azza wa Jalla and raise up your hands like we said in the journey, when we start the journey to say the dhikr of the journey, we don't really raise up our hands. But afterwards, in the journey, if I make dua, I raise up my hands. Prophet said, Ask for the fulfillment of your dua when the army meets, when to the salah established, and when the rain as well is, is going down. Also from the times during the first 10 days of the hijjah they're very coming, they're very soon. So in about two months, we're going to find the first 10 days of the Hijjah. These are blessed days. The good deeds in them is immaculate. Even the scholar, they said, during the first 10 days of the Hijjah, the good deeds that you do is better than the deeds that you do in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. SubhanAllah. First 10 days of the Hijjah. Prophet said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهَا أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ There is no other deed. Okay? There is no other deed upon which the, uh, the, 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 the righteous good deed is to be more lovable to Allah than these days. And he meant the first 10 days of the Hijjah. They said, oh, messenger of Allah, not even uh, jihad, making jihad in the sake of Allah, he said, not even making jihad to Sabirullah. Except for a man who left with himself and his wealth and he returned with neither of them. That means he lost himself and his wealth. He lost, lost them in the sake of Allah. Also, there is an ishtihad which is a dua between the Salat al-Dhuhr and Salat al-Asr in every Arbi'a, Wednesday. Now, this is an understanding from a companion, which is Jabir radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made a supplication uh, on the day when he had regained Mecca, on the day of al ithnain the day of al which is Monday, Thulatha, Tuesday. I don't like to say the days in these, in these names, Monday, Tuesday, because they represent false gods. And al Arbi'a, which is Wednesday. So the supplication was fulfilled for the Prophet of Allah on the day of Al Arbi'a between the two salahs, meaning the Dawn and the Asr. So, and he, the, the glad tiring was being shown into his face. So, Jabir, he said, Now, this is, the, well, this is the principle no one can understand better than the narrator of the hadith. The one who narrated the hadith, he knows about his narration more than the rest. So, Jabir, who narrated the hadith, he said, Any matter comes to me, any great issue. 
then I will, for example, crisis or calamities or whatever, I will go to this hour, which is between Zuhr and Asr on Al Arbi'a, and I call upon Allah, and I will know that Allah had fulfilled the supplication. So Allah Azul had fulfilled the supplication between the Salat al Dhuhr and Al Asr in every Arbi'a Wednesday. So don't lose that time. Some of the people, you know, they don't know about this. Well, alhamdulillah, there are people now at the moment sending messages on the day of Al Arbi'a to remind them of this time, which is not known to lots of people. Uh, you might find, if you go to Google and shop around in the Fatawa, Allah Musta'an, you find, for example, that the, the, this not really be correct. It's not authentic, or if it's authentic, it's only the understanding of Jabir. Let me say to you, this number one is the understanding of Jabir and the Israel Hadith. Number two is the authenticity of the Hadith is 100%. And that is our Sheikh Al-Albani, Rahimahullah, had discussed it thoroughly, and it is authentic. If it's authentic, and Jabir, radiallahu anhu, was doing it, who is going to be better than Jabir, radiallahu anhu? Second thing that we want to talk about is the status uh, where the dua is will be fulfilled. When you finish your wudu, okay, Prophet ﷺ, he said, anybody of you had made a wudu and he had made it with perfection, like the wudu of the Prophet ﷺ, then he said the following, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا If he said this dua, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا I think everybody knows that dua because it's your entrance to Islam. Except that the eight gates of paradise will be open for him. He could enter the gate from any gate, or he enter paradise from any gate he wishes. Also, when you are saying in your opening supplication in the prayer, Allahu Akbar, Kabira, Alhamdulillah, Kathira, Subhanallah, Bukrata, Wa Asila, Prophet Sallam, he, he had heard these words. He said, Who had said these words? And he said, Messenger of Allah, it's me. He said, I was amazed for it, for verily. The gates of heavens were open for that word. So in that status as well. From those status as well, when you recite the Fatiha in the Salah, so you recite it with contemplation. You recite it and you are knowing what you're saying. And that will remove the waswasa. The shaitan will not be there. Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Azza wa has said, which is a hadith Qudsi. Qasamtu salata bayni wa bayna abdi nisfain. I have divided, Allah is saying, I have divided the prayer between me and my servant into two halves. And to my servant, whatever he asks. To my servant, whatever he asks. If the servant is to say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, glorified be Allah Azza wa Jal. The praise is to be Allah Azza wa Jal, the Lord of Al Alameen. Allah would say, Hamidani Abdi. My servant had exalted me. وإذا قال الرحمن الرحيم and when he says الرحمن الرحيم which is in the Fatiha Allah would say to you أثنى علي عبدي meaning Allah extolled me and if the person says إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين that is thy we worship and thy we seek help Allah would say oh sorry he would مالك يوم الدين the day the owner of the day of judgment I should say that as well the owner of the day of judgment مالك يوم الدين Allah would say Majadani uh, Abdi glorified me. Uh, my servant had glorified me. So, uh, also when he says, We thy we worship and thy we, we, we as well uh, seek help. Allah would say, This is between me and my servant, and to my servant, whatever he had asked for. If he had said, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين and you know the translation of those verses Allah would say this is for my servant and to my servant what he had asked because you're asking him to guide you on the straight path the path upon whom you have bestowed upon them not the path of those you are having the wrath upon them or the ones who are the misguided so Allah will give you that, subhanAllah. So this is a situation where the dua will be fulfilled. Also, saying ameen behind the imam in the salah. And this is something that people are missing a lot. Prophet Sallallahu he said, إِذَا أَمَّنَ الْإِمَامِ So if the imam, okay, had made ameen. When does he say ameen? When he says, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ Prophet Sallallahu said, if the imam says, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَلْضَالِينَ say, ameen for verily. The angels would say Ameen. And the Imam would say Ameen. So if the Imam is said Ameen, then make Ameen. He whom his Ameen synchronizes with the Ameen of the angels, okay, then 
all his previous sins will be forgiven. Simple, ya ikhwani, very simple. All I have to do, when they say, says, وَغَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ Hold, akhi, until the imam starts with, uh, you go with him, ameen. But the problem is, when the imam says, وَغَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ Now he's out of breath because of the word, وَلَا الضَّالِينَ Sometimes he pauses for a second to take his breath back, and then he would say, ameen. You'll find everybody, except for few, Except for few. They would say, Ameen. That's in the loud recitation prayer. Hold your breath, Akhi. Hold for a moment. That moment will grant you the sin forgiveness. Because the angels make Ameen with the Imam. And if your Ameen synchronizes with the angels, which means synchronizes with the Imam, then you are having this mighty reward in a simple act. But so many people oppose the Sunnah, and that is why we find them losing this great reward. Also in the sujood, Prophet ﷺ, he said that the person will be closest to his Lord while he is making sujood. So, akthiru dua Make lots of dua. So, in the sujood, make the dua. Now, the best of the dua, that the dua we learn from the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Can I make other duas? Yes, you can. As long as, number one, you don't put any shirk into it or something haram. Number two, you don't memorize something that you made up and you start, start keep doing it in every sujood and you think this is the sunnah. You could stick to the dua of the prophet, no problem. If you can't stick to a dua that you made up by you and you still keep doing it and you say, oh, I think this dua is giving me you know, blessings from Allah. Also from the situation and circumstances where the dua is, is fulfilled, that is in the last tashahud. After you pass salutation upon the Prophet وسلم, and before salutation, Allah ibn Mas'ud, said, I was praying and the Prophet and Abu Bakr and Umar, they were together with him. And when I sat and I started making the exaltation of the Almighty and then passing salutation upon the Prophet, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, then I started making dua to myself. Prophet Allah, he said, ask and you will be granted. Ask would you be granted. And also there was a man before salutation, he said, I, O oh Lord, ask you, O oh Lord, Ya Allah, the Ahad al Samad, the one God, al Samad, the one who does not uh, uh, beget nor is begotten. Okay? And he's got no partner, nobody who's similar to him. That is to, O oh Lord, forgive for my, for my sins. You are the oft forgiving, the oft merciful. Prophet said, This man, he said these words. I'm going to repeat them again. Allahumma saluka ya Allah, al-ahadu al-samad, al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufu wa al-ahad, wa hii surat al-nasr. An taghfira li dhunubi, innaka anta al-ghafur rahim. That's it. Prophet Salim said, his sins is being forgiven, his sins is being forgiven, his sins is being forgiven. Three times, his sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah. So these are the situations where the dua is to be fulfilled. Now, we talk about uh, the places where the dua is to be fulfilled. The places we find in Arafah, for the Hajj, the person on the day of Arafah, not in Arafah on other than the day of the Hajj. So if you want to Arafah now, no. In the Arafah on the day of Arafah. So in Arafah on the day of Arafah. Prophet Allah said, Khayru dua the best of the dua. Dua o yawmi Arafah, the dua on the day of Arafah. Wa khayru maqal, the best of this thing that I have said, me and the prophets before me, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. This is the best of the duas. Also in Hajj as well, after you throw the Jamra, which is this the first day of Tashriq and the second day of Tashriq and the third day of Tashriq as well, you do that is you you throw the Jamra and then you go to the left. Sorry, you go straight and you make dua long dua. Then you throw the Jamra and then you go to the left. And then you go to the third one, you throw the jamra and don't read me dua. So after throwing the jamra of the small one and after the jamra of the middle one, which is on the day of Tashriq, because it's being confirmed. And this is a long dua. So after you throw on the first day of Tashriq, which is the day after the Eid al-Adha, the 11th of the Hijjah, you throw the pebbles and after the seven pebbles, you make dua, 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 long dua. I'm talking about 10 minutes dua, 15 minutes dua, half an hour dua. And then you go to the second one, you throw it, and they go to the left, forward to the left. And then you make a dua. Of course, the dua you always make it what? Towards the qibla. So this is the second. Third one, dua when you are in the Kaaba. 
okay and the uh, uh, in, in the hijr you know that the hijr as well the hijr which is the semicircle that is part of the kaaba for very usama ibn zayd he said that the prophet sallallahu he had entered the kaaba the cube which is not impo impossible for us to enter it except for you know if it's very rare if you happen to be as a king there or you are in the hijr the hijr could enter people in the the, 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 um, the police there will make you to enter it okay so you make dua as well this is a place where dua is to be fulfilled also the dua between the uh, between which is the dua in multazam that is where between the door of the kaaba and the black stone that place is small not underneath the door as people hook into the door not in that place if you put your chest and your arms like that and your cheeks and you make dua and that dua that place mashallah in that in that moment you make dua it doesn't have to be part of the tawaf just like that if you can't reach it you could just go as close as possible in in parallelization to it okay so that's another dua as well from the dua which is fulfilled at the time of hajj um, or umrah when you are on safa or marwa okay this is prophet of allah he said the dua is fulfilled so we make dua on safa we make dua on marwa seven times each one is called dua the dua and then mash'ar al-haram when you go to make the hajj and you are now going back from Arafah to Muzdalifah, okay? And then going to Mina. So in Muzdalifah, you sleep the night from Arafah. In there, before you trigger your place to go, some people are, are able to reach the Mash'ar al-Haram. It's a masjid there, okay? Next to that, it's that area of Mash'ar al-Haram where people, they make dua. But the Prophet of Allah, he said, I have made stand here and everywhere in Muzdalifah as well as a stand. So if you, if you can't do it, no problem. In your place in Muzdalifa, before that is after the Fajr prayer and before you move towards Mina to throw the Jamarat. Now, finally, we're going to talk about those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill their supplication. Okay. Or before that, let me just finish as well. Uh, so we said Dua fi Arafah, and we said in the Kaaba. Yes, we're going to talk about now. Yes, the, the, the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill their supplication. From the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill their supplication. That we have uh, the prophets and the other best of people. The prophets, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in his book, that they are the best of people. So, uh, uh, if Allah, if one of the messengers had made a dua to somebody, uh, that Allah will fulfill it. Or if a dua being from the Prophet against somebody, Allah will fulfill it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled the dua of Nuh alayhi salam and he drowned all these people who are kuffar. And dua Allah when he uh, uh, asked Allah the Almighty, which is Zakaria to grant him children, Allah granted him children. So Allah will give the, the, the supplication to those who are prophets. We're going to see, is that every time or not? We will see, inshallah. Second type of people as well, the one who is sincere in his ibadah. Oh, verily, if you are sincere in your ibadah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill your dua. And we have talked about, if you remember, the three people who were locked in the cave. Okay, those three people locked in the cave, they, all of them, they were sincere in their uh, action towards Allah Azza wa Jal. So one of them, he had asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he was so dutiful to his parents. And one, he asked Allah Azza wa Jal because he had uh, restrained himself from fornication. And the third one, because he had done the job of looking after the money of the other person in the best of ways, so they were sincere. Third person is the one who asks for Allah, his brother, while he's not there. So if you ask for your brother while he's not there, most likely it will be fulfilled. Prophet said, Da'watul Muslim, bi akhih bi al ghayb mustajaba, or Da'watul Mar il Muslim, the supplication of a man, Muslim or a woman, person, to his brother, his sister. While he's not there, it is will be fulfilled. Next to his head, there is an angel. And he is a sign for this task. Every time he calls his brother with good, the angel, which is a sign to this particular task, he would say, Ameen, to what you have said to your brother, and for you the same. And for you the same. And here, I would like to document in Zoom, for those who are listening to me, that it happened one day that one of our brothers, who is MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, 
upon the deen and he looks, mashallah, mashallah, tabarakallah, we nahsabuhu wa la nuzakihi ala Allah. Um, he was not married. And there was another brother from our brothers, is mashallah as well, and he has, he had a wife. So because she knows of that person who hangs with her husband, and she sees him as well, giving talks as well. So she said to her husband, make dua for your brother, your friend, that Allah will grant him a wife. So he looked at her, and he's a person who's got a sense of humor. He said, with his eyes like that, that means no. She said, fear Allah. Why don't you make a dua for your brother, that Allah will grant him a wife? He said to her, don't you remember the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu That if you make a supplication to your brother in his absence, then his dua will be responded. And there's an angel will be appointed to this particular task. And every time you call for him for something good, that angel would say, Ameen, and for you the same. That means just like you asked for your friend for a wife, Allah, the angel would say, and for him the same. Wallahi, he said to me that my wife, she said, no, don't make dua, don't make dua. He was, he was basically making us laugh, but it was really true. That, that wife of his, she said, don't make dua. But actually he made a dua. When he made a dua, his friend ended up with a wife and he ended up with another wife. <laughs> so that's why the angel will be saying, if you are dua, making dua to your brother sincerely, Allah will fulfill the dua for that person that you have asked for your brother. And, Allah, and the angel will say for him the same. And when you have a dua from the angel, then the, it's most likely it will be fulfilled rather than from us who are maybe not to be fulfilled or to be fulfilled. Also, when the person is struck with the crisis, calamity and he held himself and he was patient okay allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill his dua for the very the prophet وسلم, he said any muslim who struck by calamity and he says what allah had commanded him that is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un allahumma durni fi musibati wa akhlif li khayran minha illa akhlaf allah lahu khayran minha that if you say to allah we belong to him we shall return O oh lord reward me my calamity and bestow me something better in exchange Allah would make you something better in exchange and he will reward you in your calamity. This is Umm Salama, she had said it at the time when the death of Abu Salama, her husband died. But she said at the same time, who is going to be better than Abu Salama? Because she said, oh Lord, bestow me something better in exchange. SubhanAllah, she never thought. But when she said that dua, Allah granted, him, granted her the Prophet She never thought that Yama came her mind that the Prophet would marry her. After the death of Abu Salam, Prophet of Allah is better than thousands of Abu Salam. Abu Salam is a companion, but he's nothing to the Prophet. So at the day of resurrection, she's going to be the wife of the Prophet, not the wife of Abu Salam. Okay? So she made that dua, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted her her dua. Allahumma qad, shufa akhlaf Allah la khayran minha. Allah gave her better than, than, the, than Abu Salam and gave her the Prophet Muhammad as a husband. Also, the person who is wronged he was being oppressed okay this person regardless whether he's a muslim or not a muslim allah will fulfill his supplication said the person mustajaba. the supplication of person who's under oppression is to be fulfilled whether he is fajr fajr an evil doer for verily his evil doing is unto himself after allah said his evil doing is unto himself but even is a fajr so if you have wrong done somebody who's a kafir or a fajr and you thought i'd get away with it if you wronged him and impressed him, his supplication would be fulfilled against you. So if he made a dua, regardless of whom he's calling upon, he, well, if he, well, if he just says fitra, oh Lord, and he just, whatever he thinks was of God, supplication will be fulfilled. Also the da'wah to the musafir, the supplication when he's a traveler, and the da'wah of the person who is a father and the mother to his son, and the da'wah of the person who is a false, I'm lumping this because it's in the one, one hadith. Thalathu da'awati mustajaba. Three supplication, they will be fulfilled. It will not be rejected. The supplication of the father. The father includes the mother. A mother priority, of course. And that is supplication of your father. For you or against you as a son or a daughter. So be careful. Da'wah to Sa'im, the supplication of the fasting person. Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna li Sa'imi da'wah mustajaba in the fitr. When you break your fast, is a da'wah for you, Mustajaba. So if you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you break the fast, which is, that is, ذهب الضمع, I don't say ذهب الضمع of I say ذهب الضمع of But before that, or even after that, and when you make general dua, you raise up your hands. وَدَعْوَةُ الْمُسَافِرِ And the supplication of the traveler. Supplication of the traveler, 
usually because he's closer to Allah. Supplication to himself will be, inshallah, fulfilled. And also, if he's a traveler, to supplicate to others, we're not going to say it is, wrong, right, uh, it is not wrong to make supplication for the others. But yani, just to keep, keep making it as a sunnah every time a person, uh, you know, they make it like a cliche. Don't make, make forget us from your dua. It's, it's not, there's no sincerity. I've heard it from somebody. And he says it like, um, it's like it's not, he doesn't mean it. I remind, I, I, I'll tell you something which is close to it. In our country, when you have the person and you pass by your house and you want to leave to your house and you leave your brother, you say, come inside. Most of them, they don't mean it. But they have to do this etiquette. E e etiquette, which is not really to be fulfilled. Because if he said to you, yeah, okay, let me go in. You'll be shocked. Oh, I, I'm not prepared. My wife, she's going to kill me because I didn't tell her about the guests and all of that. Okay? So these people want to say, don't forget us from your dua. They don't mean it. Please put, put sincerity into it. Also, the person who makes the dua of Yunus, the noon, the one who is in the belly of the whale. La ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu min There is no God worthy of worship except for you, O Lord. Glorified to you, Subhana. I was from the wrongdoing. If any Muslim huh, makes this dua, Allah Azza wa will fulfill it for him. Person who's drinking the Zamzam water. So Prophet Sallallahu said, Zamzam water is for the intention that you drink it for. So if you are drinking Zamzam, uh, so make a you know intention that you're making it this intention for successful in an exam. This is for memorization of the Quran. This is for the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives me. Insha'Allah, wealth that I will remove my poverty. So when you drink the zamzam, make this intention. You don't have to say the intention with the tongue. No, no. It's in your mind. That's the intention. Also, from those people who are haji, is, is dua is fulfilled. Or the mu'tamir, the one, and also the one who fights in the sake of Allah, as we have said. Also from those who are, um, their dua is to be fulfilled, the one who remembers Allah a lot. For very the Prophet ﷺ, he said, three people whom their dua will not be Rejected, that is, the ones who are from the dhakirin, the ones who mention Allah a lot, remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. Also the awliya Allah azza wa jal, the awliya. So the ones who remembers Allah is the kind of always going to be awliya. So the awliya is the wali, the close, the, 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 it's every believer who is, 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 is got piety. The one who remembers Allah while he's standing up, says la ilaha illallah, sitting down on his side, kurun Allah kathira. Although always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the ones whom Allah he said, La khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. There is no grief upon them on the day of resurrection. Wa lahum yahzanun. They will not, there are no fear upon them. They're not to be grief, not to be as well. La yahzanun. They will be not in sorrow or grief. And ladina amanu wa kanu yattaqun. The ones who believe and had piety and they're pious. So he is the one who is a slave of Allah, the slave of and servant of Allah. He is the one who is beloved by Allah Azza wa Jalla. He is the one who is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the one who does what Allah imposed upon him from the obligatory and also get closer to him by those which are voluntary. So if you do that, Allah Azza wa Jalla will become everything that you do. He will be your hearing. That means he will make you to hear what pleases him. Your seeing. He will be giving you barakah and everything. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna lillahi ta'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has awliya. This awliya, Allah Jalla said, Man ada li waliyan. He who does have enmity towards any of my awliya, faqad adhantu. I declare war upon him. So this war is being declared in the Quran by Allah and his messenger onto the one who takes riba. This is a, in the hadith of the Qudsi, a war declared upon the one who is declaring war or enmity towards the awliya Allah. So if you have done something to somebody who is pious, uh, believe me, you can't get away from Allah Azza wa If he makes supplication upon you, you'll find it. Maybe you'll have an accident in a car. Something will happen straight away. Wallahi, I know of a person. I know of a person. I know him very well. That this person, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, somebody wronged him. Somebody devoured his wealth. Okay? And he made dua. Wallahi, those people who had wronged him, they came to my friend, and I am a friend, they came to my friend, and they begged him, please take this money, the one we, he claims, and give it to him, because we can't live our life properly. 
since he made dua against them, they are not really settled because he's awliya. This person we believe, alhamdulillah, mashallah, tabarakallah, his ibadah, is a shaykh, mashallah. And his friend, he told me that these people came to me, they're asking me, you know, please go and just give him what he wants and let him make dua for us, not against us. They were scared. They were scared. So the Prophet he said, if Allah, if you declare war against my slave, my servant, my wali, I will declare a war against you. And any servant who will not get closer to me, more beloved than what I obligated upon him, that is uh, the, the thing that Allah obligated upon you from the Salat al-Farid al-Siyam, this is the thing that Allah would love you to get closer to him through that. But you can get still closer and closer with a super grotary, with a voluntary, until Allah loves you. So Allah loves you when you start to do not just the obligatory, but also the voluntary. If I loved him, I will become his hearing that he hears with. I'll become his sight that he sees with. I'll become his hand that he does things with it. And he will become his leg, the one that he walks on it. And if he asks me, I will grant him. And if he seeks my forgiveness, I will seek his, I will give him refuge as well. So this is the beloved person to Allah Azza wa Jalla. He has a highly rank with Allah the Almighty. If he asks Allah anything, Allah will grant him. If he seeks, uh, uh, seeks Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, uh, refuge in Allah, Allah will give him refuge. If he calls upon him, he will respond to him. So he will be, basically, any supplication he does, it will be fulfilled because of his rank with the Almighty Azza wa Jal. And so many of those Sahaba and so many of those followers, companions, they are well known, which we're going to talk about them, inshallah, that is, to have their supplication to be fulfilled. One of them, Al radiallahu an, that is Asim ibn Thabit. Asim ibn Thabit radiallahu an, he was sent by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam along with reciters, okay? Those reciters were 10 reciters to teach people the deen. So he sent them there uh, along with Asim ibn Thabit and Zayd ibn Dathina as well with them and Abdullah ibn Tariq radiallahu an al-jami'ah. Those three, Anyway, I'm mentioning them because they were the ones who are in the story. Um, the, basically, the, the, the kuffar had tricked them. And the Asab ibn Thabit, radiallahu an, he did not, send, did not go down the mountain. They decided to go back down and we will uh, give you uh, safety. And they were liars. So they, what they did, they have killed, okay, seven of them. And three left. Asim did not go down. So... Asa made a supplication. Oh Lord, just like I'm protecting your religion today, protect my flesh from those kuffar. He made a supplication. So he was hit and he was killed. The other two, we've got a, a story, which not, we're not really going to mention their stories. They didn't that in a, but we're going to talk about the story of Asa bin Thabit. There's a woman from the kuffar of Quraysh. She wanted Asa because Asa, he had killed in the Battle of Badr some relatives of hers. So she wanted his head. So she could take the head and drink wine into his skull. So use his skull as a pot. When the kuffar approached him to get his body, Allah sent a swarm of hornets. You know, these ones that were really like wasps and swarm that really protected the flesh of us and they couldn't approach him. They couldn't mutilate him. That's a supplication of one of the companions. Anas ibn Nadr radiallahu an. Anas, the uncle of Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Nadr, the one who was killed in the battle of Uhud and mutilated so much that his sister, which is Ar-Rubayyah, Ar-Rubayyah radiallahu an, his sister is the one who knew him from his finger. She, nobody knew him because he was mutilated so much. Anas, he made a supplication when his sister, okay, she was young and she was playing around with some other girls. And what happened is that she had uh, 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 broken the tooth of a girl. Somehow she was playing with her or something. She broke the tooth. Okay. So the family of that girl, they came, okay, uh, to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they asked for retaliation. Okay. So the Prophet said, the Messenger of Allah, we want retaliation. Just like the tooth of our girl has been broken, we want to break the tooth of ar rubayya which is the sister of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu uh, Anas ibn Nadr radiallahu So, verily, Anas ibn Nadr was called, and then when he had heard this, he said, 
the tooth of my sister is to be broken, messenger of Allah? No, by the one who sent you the tooth. I will not accept, for verily her tooth by Allah will not be broken. Prophet said, Anas, this is the book of Allah, retaliation. So basically he's not objecting to the Prophet, but he's saying it's like, Allah will fulfill my supplication and Allah will not make my, the tooth of my sister to be broken. After what he said, these people who are having the right to ask for retaliation, subhanAllah, Allah changed their hearts. They came to the Prophet of Allah and they pardoned. So the Prophet he said, verily, there are slaves of Allah. If he's to make an oath upon Allah, Allah will fulfill it. Because he said, by the one who sent you the truth, her tooth will not be broken. So it's like he made an oath upon Allah. Oh Lord, I don't want the tooth of my sister to be broken. Those people, subhanAllah, Allah changed their hearts and they said, we will accept the blood money. We're not going to be accepting you know, the, 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 uh, the price you pay against breaking the tooth. We don't want retaliation. So they have actually accepted it. So here, Anas ibn Nadar's application is being fulfilled. Also, Al-Bara ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu arda. He used to, whenever he makes up an oath upon Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill it. Prophet Sallallahu he said, verily, if there's people who are, you know, uh, very weak, people that don't really pay attention to them, if they to be, that people, if he knocks on your door, he will say to him, I don't have anything, because he looks, doesn't look, you know, like clothes and wise and everything. He just push him away. But if he's to make an oath upon Allah, Allah will fulfill his oath. One of them he said, Al-Bara ibn Malik. That's the Prophet of Allah. He said, Al-Bara ibn Malik. So, كم من أشعث أغبر How many أشعث disheveled hair أغبر got dust. ديط مرين That if is to make an oath upon Allah, Allah will fulfill it. One of them he said, Al-Bara ibn Malik. Al-Bara ibn Malik رضي الله عنه He met of kuffar disbelievers from the idolaters in a battle. And he, the, the, he, he, he you know, he, subhanAllah, uh, the, the kuffar, they had some sort of go at the Muslims. They have injured a lot from the Muslims. So they said, oh, Bara, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to you, if you make an oath upon Allah, Allah will fulfill your oath. So make an oath upon Allah. Ask your Lord. So he said, aqsamtu alayka ya Rabb, oh Lord, I make an oath upon you. Like he's abiding upon you, your Lord. That you give us their shoulders. That means they will, be, they will be the winners and they will be running away. Give us their shoulders. So they met one another and the Muslims, subhanAllah, uh, at that time, they were not really having the game yet. So they said, Bara, make an oath upon your Lord. He said, Oh Lord, I give an oath upon you to give us their shoulders. And you make me to follow your prophet. So straight away Allah fulfills it. The Muslims are winning. And Al-Bara was fulfilled his wish as well. And he followed the Prophet. That means he died as a martyr. Sa'd al Waqas, another companion. His supplications to be fulfilled. Sa'd al Waqas, we mentioned this story before, if you remember. Because the Prophet of Allah said, Oh Lord, respond to Sa'd if he supplicates to you. And a man, he made a lie against Sa'd radiallahu anh, And we have said that in the previous talk. And the Sa'd, he made a dua. If this slave, he had made a dua, which is, if he made a claim which is kathib, a lying, and he just stood up just to show off, oh Lord, make him to live longer and make him to be much poor um, in the poverty and also expose him to the fitna. So with this man grown up and he became as well poor and also he became following women. So when he was asked, how do you do that? Follow women, you see in this age, he said, well, the supplication of Sa'ad got me. The supplication of Sa'ad got me. And by the way, the, the narrator, he said that we saw this man's eyes, brows is falling down and he's got really old. Yet he was, you know, basically after the women. Also, Sayyid ibn Zayd, his supplication was to be fulfilled. One woman, she gave, made an allegation and a lie against him. So she said that uh, basically he took her land. So he said, Allahumma in kanat karibi. Oh Lord, if she used to be a liar, fa'mi basalaha, make her to be blind. And make her grave in her house. So the narrator of the hadith, he said, we've seen her to be what? Blind. And she was, you know, trying to get her way through by touching the walls. Okay. 
And she was saying, oh, Da'wat Sa'ad, she got me. Da'wat Sa'ad, Sa'id ibn Zayd, Da'wat Sa'id ibn Zayd, it got me. And while she was going in her orchard, in her ground, she passed by a will in her house and she didn't see it. She fell into it and it became her grave, exactly like what Sa'id ibn Zayd had done. And Sa'id ibn Zayd, by the way, is the cousin of Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. He is one of the people whom Allah's messenger gave glad turning of paradise. So if you are a person, who is from those people, then your supplication will be fulfilled. So if you want to be one of those, then do what Allah imposed upon you from the faridah. Also, the righteous son supplicating to his father and mother, for the Prophet of Allah, he said, if the person dies, all his deeds will cease to benefit him except for three. One of them, a righteous son, a righteous daughter, making dua for him. For really the man while he is in paradise, his rank will be elevated. And he will say, I don't deserve this. He said, no, don't worry, because your son is making istighfar for you. That's why you're elevated. So the child who is a righteous, he would benefit, okay, uh, 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 the, the person whose father and his mother, whether in this life or after death. So those people who would you remember entered the cave, okay, one of them is the one who was very righteous to his parents. He made a dua through being righteous his parents, and Allah fulfilled the dua. Also, Wais ibn Amr, which we talked about, if you remember last time, and Wais ibn Amr, he was a person who was righteous to his mother. And Allah's messenger, he said, that if he's to make dua again uh, unto Allah, Allah will fulfill it. Prophet he said, Ya'ti alaykum Uwais ibn Amr. Uwais will come to you. And he will come along the delegations of people of Yemen. Okay? And uh, he has got leprosy and leprosy and uh, which is just the size of like this but he had a mother whom he was he was righteous to her if he's to make an oath upon allah azza wa jal, allah will fulfill his supplication so if anyone is able to get him to make a istighfar for you then let him do so that's why umar al-khattab we said uh, he saw him and said always make a istighfar for me so if you are a righteous person to your parents you are beneficial for yourself beneficial for your father and your mother and beneficial to everybody now are these people whom their supplication okay uh, to be fulfilled are to be righteous that's question number one and question number two if your supplication you made it and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, had for example given you that supplication does that mean allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you or if he does not been given to you does that mean allah does not love you uh, we say that it depends. It's not really correct. First of all, you need to know that when you have a dua being fulfilled, you should praise Allah Azza wa Jal. So don't worry about if your my dua is not being fulfilled. But if it's being fulfilled, then you should praise Allah Azza wa Jal. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He said, "Wala in shakartum la If you to be thankful to Allah, Allah will give you more. So Abu Hurairah radiAllahu an. He used to make supplication to Allah Azza wa that his mother to embrace Islam because she was a Christian. And she used to say even things against the Prophet of Allah so bad. She came to the Prophet of Allah and he was crying. Messenger of Allah, my, my mother, my mother, I'm making dua for her. But she does not listen. She makes, even says something very bad against you. So the Prophet of Allah, he made a dua. Allahumma hadi, umma abi hurayah. Oh Lord, guide the mother of Abu Hurayah. So he left and he was having glad tidings, Abu Huraira, that Allah would respond to the supplication of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu When he came to the house and the, the door was just about not closed, and she said, I've heard water trickling. So she said to him, Abu Huraira, stay pot, don't come. Okay? Abu Huraira, stay pot, because she was not really dressed up. So when she finished, she put her clothes and I came and, and then she came to open the door for me and then she said, Abu Huraira, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abdu Huraira. Imagine what happened to Abu Huraira now. I mean, seeing his mother who he had given up on her. Okay, he hasn't given up on her, but I'm just saying he tried his best. So she's just saying like this, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu Muhammad Rasul. So he came to the Prophet of Allah, uh, uh, running, the Messenger of Allah, and I was, he was crying, telling his what? Before he was crying, he was sad. Now he's crying because of what? He's happy, subhanAllah. You cry in both ways. When you're sad, you cry. When you're happy, you cry. So before he came crying because he's sad, his mother is not in Now he's crying because he's happy his mother entered Islam. So 
said Messenger of Allah, have a glad tiding. Probably Allah fulfilled the supplication. And Allah Azza wa Jal had guided the mother of Abu Hurairah. So he praised Allah. He praised Allah and exalted him. And he said something good. And this is what we need to know. You praise Allah. So if Allah fulfilled for you the dua, okay, for verily, thank Allah Azza wa Jal. If you thank Allah, Allah will give you more. Now, does the dua mean that if Allah fulfilled it, that means that you are a righteous man? Usually it is the case, yes, but it's not all the time. For verily, we said Allah will fulfill a dua for somebody who is a kafir, but because he's been wronged, he's been oppressed. Okay? And Allah Azza wa Jal, he answered the fulfilled and the supplication of shaitan himself. Because he said, Qala Rabbi, Qala Rabbi anzirni yawma yub'athun. Or Qala, Qala Rabbi fa'anzirni ila yawm yub'athun. So he said, Oh Lord, give me respite until the day they're going to be resurrected. So he said to him, You are from those who will be given respite. So Allah he had fulfilled the supplication of shaitan, even shaitan. Okay, so it does not all the time mean that if your supplication be fulfilled, that is that, that you are a righteous man. But yes, it is very likely it is. If your dua all the time is being fulfilled, that means you are a righteous person. Um, but does it mean the opposite? If Allah did not fulfill your dua, you're not good. No, 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 it doesn't mean. Because the Prophet himself, the best of everything, best of mankind, the best of, he's the Prophet of Allah, best of everything created. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I've asked my Lord three things. Allah gave me two, and he prevented me one. He asked Allah Azza wa Jal as well to regarding Abu Talib. Allah did not fulfill his dua. Because he said, I can't fulfill the dua regarding a mushrik. Okay? So it doesn't mean that if you did not fulfill your dua, that you are a bad person. But Prophet always would encourage us to make dua. He said, dua, ibadah. Afdal al-ibadah, dua Dua is the ibadah. And the best of the ibadah is the dua. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah azza wa jal. And the person who is stingy is the one who is stingy in his salam. And the one who is incapable is the incapable in making dua. Okay, there's nothing more honorable to Allah Azza wa Jal than the dua. Who said that? The Prophet. If you don't ask Allah, Allah will have wrath upon you, he will be angry for you. So this is the gate of dua is open for you. We come now to the last thing, which is a question and answer, inshallah. I'll give it to you, uh, uh, Ahmad, to give straight away. I don't know if you gave them briefing before or not. And we will finish by eight minutes, inshallah. Eight minutes or ten minutes we'll finish, inshallah. Fadr. Okay, uh, co-host, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought in the beginning I explained that uh, we wouldn't take questions till the end and we'll have one question. Because today I'm, I'm not being hammered, I'm being bazookered here. I've got uh, three questions and two questions and people asking the same question. We've got 20 questions before the end. So please, if we could not ask questions until the end and we could have one question, which would give every brother and sister a chance. Um, today the class was originally for St. Albans, so... If St. Albans has a question, please come forward, rename yourself to St. Albans, and you can have the questions priority. But please follow the rules. One question, and then you can ask another question later, inshallah. Because it's very difficult for, for other brothers and sisters to ask, and it's difficult for the one who's gathering the question as well. Jazakumullah uh, khairan. Mustak from St. Albans, please, could you ask a question? Unmute him, please. Assalamu alaikum. Um, the, the person who's dua who, is, um, who has enmity towards maybe another brother or a family member or a spouse or something like this, is their dua accepted, whether who's in the right or the wrong? So a person who's, do, who's got a problem, just say that please. You're saying a person who's got a problem or an enmity towards a family member of his and he's making dua against him, is that fulfilled or not? Is that your question? No, not making dua against him. He's just making general dua, but he has a problem with another family member or a spouse or something. Ah, so you are saying that is that going to prevent his supplication to be fulfilled because he's got a dispute with somebody else? Yes. Okay. Well, his supplication is going to be of two. One which is supplication which is for himself. Okay. Uh, and supplication which is for uh, 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 against that person. Supplication for himself. Okay. That And he has now some enmity towards that person or a dispute or a quarrel. We say, uh, we say that if that quarrel is justified, maybe he's a bi'al al or a person, then his supplication is no problem. But if he has uh, a dunya matter, okay, then supplication, whether it is 
against that person or for him and it's not justified, Allah will not fulfill it. So if you are asking, for example, and he's this person, it's not justified. Why are you breaking your relationship with him? You've got nothing with him except for something which is to do with dunya. And you know for a fact boycotting for more than three days is haram, major sin. For boycotting for one year is like killing the person. So how can you kill him and you're saying, oh Lord, help me and oh Lord. And who, how can you kill him and you say, oh Lord, as well kill him. So his supplication most likely will be unfulfilled. So justification, if it's justified dispute, no problem. If it's not justified dispute, ah, he doesn't really take from you. You don't have to invite him. You don't have to hug him. Just a message. Salamu alaikum, brother. And he's, let's just do gadar and akhara. You know, it's just started. Break the ice and things will follow up later on. He will not expect this. Oh, thank you very much. But if the person deserves it, a'udhu billah, bad manners, ahlul bid'ah, then I don't have to, you know, make up with him. But if it's to do with dunya matter, hated argument, cool it off, akhi brother. You know, everybody can fall out with somebody, even could fall out with your wife. All right? Now. Go ahead, please, Louise. Uh, as long as I'm, so uh, my question was, regarding the one who's oppressed and his dua gets fulfilled, is it only, is it his general duas get fulfilled or is it only that if he wants to make a dua against the person who oppressed him? So is it a follow-up for that question? Uh, no, it's unrelated. Oh, uh, not really. So if you've been oppressed by somebody, if someone's oppressed you and it's said that your dua is likely to be accepted, is it your general duas or is it only the dua against that person? Well done. Well done. By the way, you are always, we're going to ask you what making dua to us. <laughs> <laughs> are you always al-qarni or not? <laughs> but, uh, right. Regarding this issue, this very good question. Is the dua of the person who is Madhloom under oppression, his dua in general, in general, or just dua. Definitely, his dua against the one who made dhulm against him, it will be fulfilled. Definitely, others will be fulfilled straight away, or will be given a respite, or will be held on top of the clouds. But Allah will say to Bi'izzati wa Jalali, La ansurannaki. I will give you by my 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 Lord, my 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 team, my exalt, my exalted. I will be giving you the response to it. Um, or on the day of resurrection, you will be pity even having your uh, uh, sins expiation because of it. But regarding himself, that is what you're asking. Allah Ta'ala, it doesn't really, it doesn't really help because it's, it is a specific thing. His dua, dua al-madloom against the zalim. As for dua for himself, now he could be kafir. How can we dua a kafir of a person against him regarding himself? Allah will believe fulfill it. No, because here there will be another element comes into it, which is how good he is. Uh, is his clothes haram? Is his, um, you know, his food halal? Do you understand me? So the other elements will come in. So if he is madloom plus righteous, so his dua will be fulfilled against that person. And because he's righteous, his dua for himself will be responded and more responded because he's under the dhulm and he's being patient. So it will be responded. But not every madloom, his dua for himself will be fulfilled. Okay? Muhammad Suhaib, please go ahead, Akhi. Quickly, Muhammad Suhaib, we don't have time. Sheikh, you know you said about the dua uh, on the last uh, hour of today and then between, uh, on a Wednesday, between the first two, uh, the second and third prayer. Yes. Do you have to be in a state of purity, clothes and wudu eyes? Like We're going to talk about the etiquette of making dua uh, which is in general, what, how to make the dua, which we didn't talk about, for example, facing the qibla, we didn't talk about the raising of the hands, we didn't talk about purity. Yes, the pure you are is better because even saying the salutation, salamu alaikum, is better to be pure. Prophet of Allah did not like to say salamu alaikum unless he was pure. Yes, purity is one of those things that would help to make the person's dua is to be responded to. But if you are in under oppression and you want to make a dua quickly because that person made you oppression, your dua will be fulfilled because even though you did not really have the purity because that you know the person who is madloom he's in the heat of the world the heat of the oppression that's why he will be triggered in dua and his dua will be from his heart and even his tongue will start speaking straight away quickly smoothly against that person who had made dhulm against him طيب, let's go now for the last please question this is a written question from st albans when children how, how, many, how many questions do you have from st albans written one one left okay 
and there's no other people up there. Okay, we're going to call because I, I have, this is Juma Ikhwani, who the one who's falling from America now, and we have only now exactly 15 minutes, and this is the last hour in Juma. So please forgive me. It's going to be the last question from Sun. Please forgive me. Tadad. When children, teenagers are fasting, how can we encourage them to make supplication without it seeming that we are nagging them? You know, I put my little son, daughters with me and I keep making dua and they just put their hands up. And they, say, and they, don't, they don't know what I'm saying, but some they repeat with me. And some, but, but with time, they start right, picking up words. Ya Allah, man, Allah, man, Allah. And then I, sometimes I add into my dua with them things to do with them. Oh Lord, make, for example, she's a sheikha and make her, she's to be hafiza. And she'll make as well, she and her sister, you know, the, the sisters are, uh, or the boys and the boys, there will be all in competition between the one which is close in age. Oh Lord, make them to love one another, not to hit one another. And they will laugh, okay? So make that is a, a you know, is an interesting entertainment. Don't make it like boring, okay? They make it interesting, inshallah, and with time. And please forgive me, everybody, those who are, because I have to invest in the last 15 minutes. We have only 15 minutes, even less than that. Subhanakallah, bihamdik. There will be a third part for this, inshallah, in, to, um, in the beginning of the... For, for, no, no, actually next week. Next Jumu'ah, there will be a third part for this, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.